All right. Okay. Cool. I hear Don. Tell I hear me. me. Good afternoon, folks. Don Tyson, Kim Crow, coming to you Down once to again you. from Cash, Oklahoma. Down. Area Consolation Tournament. Fort Top Rocks and Lady Mustangs taking on the Mountain View Goatee Bow Lady Tigers in an elimination game. You win this game, you play tomorrow night to go to state. You lose this game and the season's over. Big ball game. A repeat matchup of a couple of meetings of these two teams played earlier in the season. We'll get to that in a little bit. We'll bring in a partner, Kim Kroll. It's an exciting time of year, Kim. There's uh, 126 teams started this year in Class B, and there's 16 left. So that's pretty good. Down to the end of it, yeah, it is. You've got to take a lot of pride in getting this far, but they still don't give you that pass yet. So <laughs> got to get today and tomorrow. Yep. But they but they've done well. You know, this is kind of their their thing. They get beat early in the playoffs, then play every day. Ah, uh, yeah. I think and they uh, like that uh, well, live or die. Yeah, they adds to your career scoring total. See, when you <laughs> get to play every day like uh -huh, that. There you go. Yeah. Well, you know, it, there's something to be said about when your backs are to the wall. You know, you've got to really come out and play, and that's that's what they did after they lost the regional finals and uh, a re first game of the regional. They won two last week, and one yesterday. So they're both teams. In the same scenario, three-game winning streak. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a tough road to get there, and, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, they're sure making a good effort, and yep. you know, we always talk about playoffs is just survive some way in advance, and yep. that's what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. They haven't had any blowouts, but right. they've been getting the close victories and moving on. So that's that's the way to do it. Kind of the same scenario they had last season, as they had to travel all the way to Stroud, but they. Uh, did the same thing, lost in the first regional game, and then they won three or four in a row and uh, was within a, a game of the state tournament. And here we are again. So you got to hand it to the coaches for, you know, keeping uh, keeping them motivated each game and uh, play their best at the end of the ball game. That's kind of what they did yesterday. They end of the ball game, they they, they really played really well the last three or four minutes. Uh, yeah, and that's hard to do when you're uh -huh. playing, you know, like three games or three days in a row. Mm -hmm. It wears and tears on you. I don't uh -huh. care if you are 16, 17 yeah. years old. That's right. Uh, it's still a tough, tough way to do it, but they've succeeded so far. Have you got the uh, pathway that they arrived here I this do. ball game? Yeah, let's look at right. um, Fort Cobb, Brox, and how they got here. They hosted a district at Fort Cobb and beat Paoli in the first round, 96 to 18. I'd like to have spread those points out. Yeah, exactly. The so, yeah, exactly. In the finals of the district, they beat Maysville 42 to 34. That sent them to the regional at Ellick, where in the first round, they were defeated by Lokiba Sickles, 52 to 26. We dropped them down into the consolation bracket, where they beat Ryan, 50 to 49. And then the next game, they beat Chattanooga, 36 to 33. They got into the area here at Cash yesterday, and they defeated Sentinel 38 to 33. So, uh, you know, good, good run for them. For Mountain View Goatee Bow, they also hosted a district. In the first game, they beat Bray Doyle 59 to 20. In the district finals, they defeated Granite 70 to 16. The regional first round also was in Mountain View and they were defeated by Sentinel 35 to 27. That dropped them into the consolation bracket where they defeated Mount, or they defeated Sweetwater 41 to 27. That game was in Hammond. And in the consolation finals regional, they defeated Duke girls 54 to 35. Yesterday, they defeated Turner 44 to 39. So that gets them to this afternoon's game against Fort Cobb Broxton. And, you know, it's kind of been, um, a steady deal Mountain View scoring, you know, 35 to 50 points a game. That's uh -huh. about what Fort Cobb has been giving up, and that's what they've had before. So it may be pretty close game. We never know how this is going to yeah. work. Yep. I would imagine it would be a close matchup. I think we're going to pause right now for the national anthem.
All right, uh, before we get into it, I might mention that these two teams have played prior. Uh, Cobb Broxton defeated. Mountain View Goatee Bow 48 to 31 in a county tournament. And then Mountain View Goatee Bow defeated Fort Cobb 31 to 27 in a home game over in Mountain View on February the 3rd. Starting lineup first for the Mountain View Goatee Bow Lady Tigers. They start a freshman number one, Rowan Fight. A senior number 12, Grace Sovo Cook. A senior number 15, Kayla Payne. A freshman number 21, Paisley Eastwood. And number 23, senior Kaya Quitone. The Lady Tigers are coached by Mr. J.B. Kimberlin, assisted by former Fort Cobb graduate Autumn Clue and Joseph Barbo. Starting for the home team, Lady Mustangs, they start a junior. Number one, Zoe Brown. A junior, number three, Kalia Silverhorn. A senior, number 12, Ginger Bear. Sophomore, number 13, Madison Savage. And a sophomore, number 15, Reagan Rep. The Lady Mustangs are coached by Miss Jenna Rogers, assisted by Kelsey Shumpert. They come into the game with a record of 14 wins and 15 losses, and they are on a three-game winning streak. The Lady Tigers have a record of 21 wins and seven losses, and they are ranked number 17 in Class A this year, and they also come in with a three-game winning streak. In the first last contest, these two Teams met over at Mountain View. Uh, Rowan Fight had a good ball game. She's number one for the Tigers. She had 11 points in that contest. Kaya Quitone also had 11 uh, for the Lady Tigers as they jumped out to an early 16 to three lead and held off uh, the Mustangs charge back in the second half and the Tigers held on to a 31 to 27 victory. Mustangs in the home white uniforms going left to right. Tigers in the road red going right to left. It'll be Ginger Bear jumping center against Grace Sovo Cook. And we're about set to go. And the ball is controlled by the Lady Mustangs. And the Tigers will come out in a man-to-man -man defense right off the bat. There's Ginger Bear right of the block. Good defense there by Quito, knocked it away, but Bear was able to retrieve it. There's a drive along the baseline by Rep. Kicks it over to Bear, 15-footer left of the lane. No good. Savage with a putback. It's good. Madison Savage with the backside offensive rebound and puts the Mustangs on top two to nothing here with a chance to make it three. Yeah, Quitone picks up the first foul. Madison was kind of in the right place at the right time. He was the only one on that side, and the, the rebound went long over, and she was in perfect position. That's a good way to describe her play. She played awfully well yesterday in the victory over Sentinel, and she had a couple of plays just like that, right place at the right time. Fort Cobb in a man-to-man -man defense as well. Rowan fight going against Reagan Rep, and Reagan takes it away from her. Turnover to, on the Lady Tigers. And quickly the Mustangs the other way. Ball taken away by Quitone. Kaya Quitone picked the pocket of B Brown. Shot blocked on the other end by Bear as she got up high and blocked the shot of Kayla Payne. And it will stay with the Lady Tigers. You know, this is one of the few teams Fort Cobb may have a size advantage on. Yeah. Correct, yeah. You know, just to, maybe an inch or two mm -hmm. at each, each, each position, mm -hmm. but uh, it'll come into play. In the last meeting, I recall uh, Fight or Quitone did a great job dribbling right down the middle of the lane against this defense and got a lot of easy baskets. Shot no good that time by the Tigers. Rebounded Fort Cobb Broxon. You know, I would think they would look inside. Looks like Ginger Bear's got a three or four inch mm -hmm. advantage on the um, Sobo Cook. I believe so. Yep. Good point. I think that's generally what they try to do anyway, but might have a little better advantage today. Reagan Rep is going to be fouled on her way to the basket. <clears throat> Paid a nice little spin move. Paisley Eastwood picks up the foul. <clears throat> and Rep will be at the line shooting two. You know, yesterday's game, we didn't have a foul at all in the first quarter, <laughs> and now we're picking up a couple uh -huh. of them. Reagan makes the first. <clears throat> Made a big free throw yesterday at the end of the game. <clears throat> Made them both. 
Five to nothing. Lady Mustangs on top. 6-19 to play opening period. <clears throat> By Quitone, good ball player for the Lady Tigers. Good ball handler, good scorer. Over to fight. Thought about the three-pointer. Now she'll drive along the baseline. Kicks it out front to Quitone. Gets a screen. Oh. Steal by Silverhorn. And she lost it out of bounds. I don't know if he really called that a turnover or not. No one, it didn't change possession, no, so I guess it won't be. I don't think so. Well, we got away with knocking down the, the screener <laughs> on there. True. No whistle on it, so yeah. let one go by. Yeah, you can't call them all. I, I hope not anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, That'd be my luck, though. You set a pick and get knocked yeah, down and, and they, they don't, don't call it. Yeah. yeah. Ball knocked out of bounds by Zoe Brown as she blocked the shot of Paisley Eastwood. And it'll stay with Mountain View Goaty Boat. Yeah, these two teams both competed in the Caddo County Tournament last number of years. Of course, Mountain View Goaty Boat in Kiowa County just across the border. There's Quitone with a good move. Dumps it down low. Shot off the glass is good. Kayla Payne from a nice feed from Quitone. And it's five to two. Yeah, a lot of Mountain View's district is in Caddo County, and that's kind of how they mm -hmm. worked out. They needed yeah. another team, and that worked out good for both of them. Ginger Bear's shot's no good, and I think she's fouled trying to get the rebound. As is, happens quite often, you see you missed the shot, and then you foul trying to get the rebound. That's the first on Ginger. When you shoot over somebody, there's probably going to be somebody between you mm. and the basket on the rebound. Exactly. And that's what happened there. Uh -huh. And oftentimes, it's just a natural reaction to try to, yeah. try to get your miss. There's a cutter. Payne on the right side. Layup good. That's two baskets for Kayla Payne in a row, and it's five to four. Yeah, they're able to find a little crack in that defense and get Payne open on a low block. Down low to go to Bear. Shot off the glass and good. Yeah, I think that's a play that could run a lot. Ginger Bear with good post-up position. Makes her first basket. Fort Cobb on top, seven to four. Left side to go to Rowan Fight. Lob pass to Quitone. Along the baseline, a little 10-footer is good. They kind of backed off of her, and that's not a wise thing because she's a good shooter. And that's her first basket. Mustangs running a little weave out front. They'd like to get the guards open. Uh, Zoe Brown and Silverhorn, excellent three-point shooters. But the Tigers in this man-to-man -man defense doing a pretty good job stopping that so far. Savage will try a three-pointer. Good! Madison Savage. I'm not sure she shot a three-pointer all year, but she can that one, and she's got six early points for the Mustangs, and they lead it 10 to six. Yeah, well, that's some bonus points right there when yeah, you get one of your... Keep them from packing inside. Absolutely. They'll have to come out and watch uh, them. Now Quitone holding out front. Right side to go to Fight. She's a good three-point shooter. Good. Rowan Fight with her first basket. Tell you what, both teams are shooting the ball they well are. so far. Yeah. Ten to nine. Back and forth ball game. Mustangs have led throughout. We played about five minutes. Kind of got the Tigers come out extending their defense here a little bit. Down low the go to Bear. Turnaround shot's no good. And it sails along the baseline. Picked up there by Eastwood. Quickly fight the other way. Chance for the Tigers to take the first lead. Solvo Cook holding. Over to Quitone. Down underneath the Solvo Cook. And she's going to be fouled by Savage. But somehow... The Lady Tigers are doing a good job on their back screens and they've got some good looks underneath the basket on the last two or three trips. Yeah, Kayla Payne's had a couple of easy baskets after getting a clearing in there and uh, Quiton had an easy bucket roll of it too. Sobo Cook shooting two, makes the first. And checking in for the Tigers will be Mabry Hooper. Replacing Payne. Both three throws good. And the Tigers on top, 11 to 10. 
Pretty balanced scoring by both teams so far. Four of the Tigers have scored, three of the Mustangs so far. Silverhorn bounces down to Savage in the paint and it's turned over. Tried to get it down to Madison and Quitone jumped in the way. There's Eastwood's 15 footer, no good. Rebound for Cobb. Off to Zoe Brown into the front court. Silverhorn left wing threes too hard. Had to rush that one just a tad. Two minutes to play, opening period. Quitone dribbles up to the top of the key. 17 footer, no good. Tracks down her own rebound though. In the corner they go to Hooper. Her shot's no good, rebound Eastwood. Throw and fight to Quitone. This will be the third opportunity for the Tigers this trip. Over they go to Hooper, right side of Quitone. They just keep running that little weave until they get someone open. And they're gonna call a foul on is that Ginger yeah, Bear. That's two on Ginger. That's really a, yeah, you a don't big want foul to there. Get a foul, you know, running into screen out mm -hmm. the top of the free throw line. Well, Ginger will take a seat with 132 to play first period. Yesterday she had some foul trouble at two in the, at the half and then picked up her third shortly after that. Rowan fights, three pointers good. That's two trays for fight. That's two for two from long range and the Lady Tigers on top 14 to 10. What Cobb led early five to nothing but the Tigers have come roaring back here on a 14 to five run. 108 to play opening period. Brenna Davis in for Ginger Bear for the Mustangs. Under a minute to play now. Reagan rep out to Davis. Three pointer straight away, no good, rattled out. Battle for the rebound. Loose on the floor and the Tigers fumble it away. I think it was gonna be their ball and they couldn't get a handle on it. So it'll stay with Fort Cobb Broxton with 44 seconds to play opening period. It was kind of rolling on the floor and nobody could get a <laughs> good grip on it. Just kind of uh, kept getting away yeah. from them. Inbound to Davis. See how the Mustangs adjust to not having Bear in there. There's a drive by Zoe Brown. She's fouled on the floor, I think. Non-shooting situation. Reagan Halstead checks in, replacing Paisley Eastwood. Madison Savage, turnaround shot, hit the side of the backboard. And they say it hit behind the backboard, I guess, and it'll be well, turned over to the... Yeah, that cushion goes right along the edge. I don't, I don't know how you get the back. What determines <laughs> the back and the side of it? It's a round cushion. And shot right back to her. Tigers with a basketball. 23 seconds to play first period. They're going to hold for one, it appears. Pretty well played first quarter by both teams. And now Quitone just dribbling out the clock down to 10. Drives to the right in the lane. And she's gonna be fouled by Silverhorn, I guess. They're calling it pretty tight into the basket. Called it on Brown. Zoe Brown yeah. picks up her foul. Yeah, I think it was Silverhorn's hand in there, but. Quito will be at the line shooting two. And she makes first. So far, both teams three for three at the line. Savage is gonna be replaced by Anaya Funmaker. For Fort Cobb. And Quitone makes both free throws. They lead it 16 to 10. Six seconds to play. Zoe into the front court. All the way in the lane. Shots blocked. And the Tigers pick it up. And that will do it. After one period of play. Fort Mountain View, Yodi Low Lady Tigers 16. And the Fort Cobb Broxton Lady Mustangs 10. What's the first half, first quarter shooting numbers, Kim? Well, Fort Cobb shooting 38%, three out of eight. Um, Mountain View shooting 46%, five out of 11. So 
They've got two three-pointers, two out of four, and Fort Cobb's got one out of three. Turned around pretty quick. Fort Cobb come out with that five to nothing lead, yeah. and the uh, Tigers have outscored them 16 to five since that time. So good quarter by the Lady Tigers. I'd like to thank our sponsors while we have the opportunity. Appreciate Washita Valley Bank for sponsoring us today and all season. And I'd like to thank those folks for letting me take off work and come down here and do these games. It's a lot of fun. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'd like to thank T-Birds Convenience Store, Mr. Travis Birchie. Carnegie Fiber for all your high-speed internet needs. Carnegie, Oklahoma. And this Southwest Oklahoma Driving School. Mr. Kent Sexton, and appreciate the sponsorship of those folks all season. I hope he teaches them good. <laughs> We're going to be meeting those people on the road, uh, so it's, you're right. Kent he does a good job he with does. whatever he's doing. Kent's an old lone wolf guy. That's oh, where yeah? I'm from a long time ago. Kent's dad was a superintendent there when I was in. I think when uh, I was in the second grade, they moved to oh, Apache. Really? Uh huh. Yeah, then they've been at Apache a long oh, time. Ever since then, yeah. There's a drive by Fout, uh, Fight, and she is fouled by Reagan Rep. So the Lady Tigers are playing awfully well. And Rowan Fight, who has six points so far, has a chance for two more here. First free throw is no good. Yeah, Bill Sexton, he was a superintendent at Lone Wolf, Oklahoma. And uh, they, he moved away probably in 68 uh, or somewhere in there. Moved to Apache, been there ever since. Got into Sexton and Sexton School mm -hmm. Supply mm -hmm. Business. He's supplied a lot of schools uh, all over the state. He went a long time, a long ways. And I'm stuff. telling you. They missed the free throw, and then Fort Cobb fumbled a rebound out of bounds. So let's stay with the Tigers. They get it into Rowan Fight. Shot over Davis is good. It's an eight point lead for Mountain View Godibo, 18 to 10. Once they got going, they've had pretty good run. They're well, they shooting have. the ball well, made a lot of shots. They have, for a fact. And they're playing good defense. Well, Cobb's not really had any open looks. There's one right there. Reagan rep left wing three is too hard. Rebound Tigers. Yeah, if you don't get very many open looks, you sure need to make them when you yeah. get one. And that was a wide open shot there. Yeah, they didn't ever take advantage of the inside game like I thought they would. They ran one play down there and uh, got Ginger a good shot, but that's been it. Now that, she's out of the game. Yeah. You wonder how long they'll keep her on the on the sidelines with those two fouls. I don't think you want to get real far behind here. If you're Fort Cobb with probably your most your leading scorer sitting on the bench with two fouls. I'm sure she'd like to get many minutes as she can without her picking up her third. But. Yeah, and Brennan Davis got that foul a minute ago instead of rep. Yeah, Quitone holding. Tigers being pretty patient this trip. Not really having Mustangs not putting any pressure on them really on the ball so they can pass it around. Yeah, they're giving Quitone that three-pointer. They don't mm -hmm. think she's going to shoot it, and yeah. she hadn't so far, yeah. but it's, she's sure uh, they back off yeah. of her when she yeah. gets it. I think they're afraid of her drives, I think. Three-pointer rattled out by Fight. That's her first miss. Halfway down and popped out. Now the Mustangs on the attack. There's Silverhorn, has it batted away. Picked up by Quitone, quickly the other way, fight. Shot over. Brown's no good, he goes out of bounds off Fort Cobb. As Bear and Savage will check in for Fort Cobb along with Kayla Payne and Paisley Eastwood for the Lady Tigers. With 6.03 to play second period. Yeah, they've got a good-looking offense, the way they run these, uh, run their sets. There's Quito, and they back off of her. Three-pointer is going to sail out of bounds. So that kind of <laughs> answers our question there, Kim. Yeah, maybe they knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. But when they're daring you to shoot it, sometimes you just need to, right? Yeah. <laughs> got to prove it one way or the there other. There you go. Five fifty-one to play, second period. Reagan Rip dribbles in the lane, little 12-footer rolls off, no good, got her own rebound, but then they take it away from her. Yeah, that was a pretty open shot uh -huh. she had there, so yep. good look at it. Yep. Yeah, if you can get a shot 
uncontested below the free throw line. You take that every time. There's a lob pass to Cook. Kind of a dangerous pass. They got away with it. Now, Wheatone crossover, a little eight footer. No good. Rebound, Ginger Bear. That's what she likes to do. Quitone got a good quick first step, and she can get by you. That puts you in a bind. In the corner of the Brown. Tigers doing a great job closing out on the shooters on the perimeter. Silverhorn and Zoe Brown yet to really get open at all. There's a pass intercepted by Solo Cook. They tried to pick and roll, but the pass wasn't there. There's fight. Nobody takes her all the way to the rim, lays it up and in. A little miscommunication on the, the defensive matchups, and fight noticed it right off and jetted right to the goal. Yeah, when Davis um, was headed toward the end line and made that pass, it was intercepted. She was at the out of bounds line, and that was her person that got down there and scored. She didn't have time to get back yeah. on defense. You could see Fight's eyes light up when she saw a clear pass to the goal, and she yeah. took advantage of it. And that's 10 points for Rowan already. Halfway through the second period. And the Tigers have taken a commanding lead 20 to 10 as they've outscored Fort Cobb 20 to 5 since the opening minutes of the game. And the, ti the Tigers have taken the floor. Mountain, Mountain View Goaty Bow is ready to go. And here comes Fort Cobb Broxton. Yet to score here in the second period with 4.35 to play. Yeah, they've had a couple of open looks, missed the shots, but they really haven't had any easy shots nope. either. That's right. Now, the Tigers have done a good job defensively for sure. Silverhorn, pick and roll to Savage, shot off yeah. the glass and in. Good play by Madison Savage and a good pass from Silverhorn. That's eight points for Savage already. Kind of breaks the scoring drought. Yeah, there's a travel on Reagan Halstead as she attempted to shoot a three-point shot. So the Mustangs with an opportunity here to cut into that lead a little bit. Here comes the pick and roll action again. This time Silverhorn will take the 17-footer. It's no good. Savage chopped it away, but couldn't save it. That's a pretty good play right there. The Tigers, they didn't go for that. They didn't let the, uh, the screener roll to the basket, and uh, Silverhorn took advantage and, and uh, just couldn't make the shot, but it pretty good looking play. There's Fight right of the lane, got shots good. I tell you, she's a good ball player. Yeah, she just kind of drove it in and, you know, just bumped the defender enough to get a little clearing and then hit the open shot. That's 12 for Fight. And they lead it by 10. Right side they go to Zoe Brown. Top of the key to Reagan Rep around to Madison Savage. Trying to get it to Ginger, but for some reason they wouldn't pass it to her. About time you're gonna have to go to her, I think. Yeah. When she's got a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. down underneath, she needs the ball. Yep. And we're gonna have a jump ball situation and it'll stay with Fort Cobb. Yeah, she hadn't touched it on offense in quite some time. And Bear will inbound into Savage. Fight's doing a great job on Silverhorn. There's the screen, the roll. Can't do anything with it. Now they're trying to get it over to Bear. It's pretty well a pick and roll on every side. The Savage and Bear, there's the Savage. And she's gonna be fouled by Grace Sovo Cook. You know, you almost kind of want to park yourself in the lane and see if this is one of those games where they call three seconds or not. <laughs> <laughs> and just stay there till yeah, they call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Get an advantage inside. Mm -hmm. Savage will be shooting two. She's one, one for one at the line so far. That one's good. Mabry Hooper checking in along with Quitone for the Lady Tigers, replacing Kayla Payne and Halstead, I believe. Yes. Madison makes them both. She's three for three at the line so far. Well, she got 10 points. Yeah. 
Pressure in the backcourt by Fort Cobb now. Up ahead to Eastwood, one on one, goes around, bumps into Savage, and Savage takes the charge. Good defense by Madison as she stood her ground, and Eastwood bumped her to the floor. With 2.42 to play in the half. Tigers beat the press real easy that time, and uh, Kind of got a break there. They got picked up a charge, I think. Yeah, they had a two-on-one break, uh -huh. and she just kept the ball yeah. instead of yeah. kicking it off. There's Ginger. Thought about a three-pointer. Goes over to Silverhorn instead. There's a lob into Bear, but they had her double teamed. Somehow Ginger strapped it away from them. Gets it out to Savage. Great hustle by Ginger Bear to get that ball free. Yeah, when they run that pick and roll, it's like we're going to pick and then pass whether you're open or not. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Jean, uh, Zoe Brown takes a lot of contact, missed the shot. It looked like it might bank in there for a moment, but she'll be at the line shooting too. Yeah, I think Mabry Hooper picked up her second foul. Yeah, we're going to have a stoppage. Not sure what the uh, discussion about it is. She made, was she lined up on the black line there, or Kim? Was that what the deal was? Well, I didn't <laughs> see it, but it looks like that's. <laughs> They're pointing at it anyway. Yeah, but I didn't notice her standing there. I didn't either. <laughs> that's something I would do. Just yeah, that'd be a good <laughs> idea if they let you try it. She doesn't need it. She made the first one. So far, Lady Mustangs are six for six at the line. They've made them all so far. Zoe on the board with two points now. It's a six-point lead, 22-16. There's oh, going to be the third foul on Bear, but the call to travel. Yep, she got away with wow, it. Wow, that was kind of hard to believe that. Coach Timberland is, Kimberlin is saying the same thing. He said, it looked like a block to me. It did me too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take advantage of that break. Yeah, exactly. 22-16, Tigers led by as many as 10, I believe, down to six. And we've got it back to a six to six yeah. quarter now. Yeah. Turnaround shot by Ginger Bear. What an awesome yeah. shot that was. Very difficult shot, and she made it look easy. 22 18 now. Yeah, it looked like if she'd turned the other way, it would have been easier, but she <laughs> made it work anyway. Yeah. Against the double team. 133 to play. Now the Tigers holding out front. Solo Cook right side to Quitone, who likes to drive, and they back off of her. Down the middle is Hooper, layup no good. And then she gets her own rebound. Boy, that's, there's fight, 18 footer straight away is good. Boy, it's just almost money when she shoots, no matter where she's at. Well, that's 14 for yeah, her so far. And not, I can only think of two misses. <laughs> Minute to play here in the half. Reagan Rip, 14 footer, good. Right below the free throw line. And it's 24-20. Really a good ball game here by both teams playing well. Quitone, right side to fight. Shot over Bear is good. Just automatic. Six yeah, point lead. She's had a great first half. 33 seconds to play. Right side to go to Rip. Gets a screen from Ginger. Out to Savage. There's Ginger Bear, three-pointer straight away off the heel of the basket. And a rebound, Quitone. And she'll walk the ball into the front court, probably going to take the last shot here, try to build on this six-point lead. Quitone, left side to go to Sovo Cook, three-pointer on the way, no good. And Lady Mustang get the rebound. And your halftime score, Mountain View Goody Bowl, 26. Fort Cobb Broxton 20, as that was a good quarter. Both teams scored 10 points, and the lead remains at six for Mountain View Goaty Bow. And we'll turn it over to Kim for the first half shooting numbers. Kim. All right. Zoe Brown had two points. Ginger Bear with four. Madison Savage, good half with 10. And Reagan Rep has four. Fort Cobb shooting 40%. First half, six out of 15. Two pointers are five out of 10. Three pointers, just one out of five. And free throws, seven out of seven. They have five personal fouls. Bear's the only one with more than one, and she has two. 
for Mountain View Goody Bowl. Rowan Fide had a great first half with 16 points. Grace Sobo Cook with two. Kayla Payne with four. And Kai Quiton with four. Mountain View shooting 46% first half, 10 out of, tw 10 out of 22, excuse me. Two pointers are eight out of 15, 53%. Three pointers, two out of seven. 29% and free throws four out of six. They have six personal fouls. Eastwood and Hooper have two each. So, you know, like I said, Fort Cobb gets off to a 5-0 lead and then Mountain View kind of took off and went. They uh, went on a little 16-5 to run to end out the first quarter and then the second quarter was an even up 10-10. So, uh, it, it seems like I would want Fort Cobb to get the ball inside a little more. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about Ginger Bear got a little height advantage and She's been able to score the two or three times she's got it down there, but uh, she's got to stay out of foul trouble. Yep. You know, she yep. got, really got away with the third foul they didn't call. So no doubt about lucky it. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but she needs to stay in the ball game. They need to see if they can get her the ball a little bit more. They uh, haven't been able to make the three-pointers one out of five. But, um, you know, it's a good good half. They're 26-20. It's anybody's ball game still. Uh, Fort Cobb's offense is just uh, suffering a little bit and haven't got into a flow of things. Well, I think uh, Mountain View's got to be pretty happy uh, with uh, Rowan fight tonight. That's uh, She's just been in all different type shots. It's not just one particular shot right. she's got, and I don't know how you how you set up a defense to try to stop somebody who uh, who can score from anywhere, and that's kind of yeah. what she did in the first half. Yeah, she's got five two-pointers and two three-pointers. So exactly. I put her on the free throw, free throw line. line. Looks there like she's over two there. <laughs> yeah, maybe the hack a shack. Maybe yeah. that'd be the way to go. What's, what's your trivia question today, Kim? All right, now we'll give it now. i tell you what, we'll just give it now, and then we'll give the answer after the third quarter. All right. You remind oh. me to do that. All right. Okay. But we're going to go career scoring in five-on-five -five girls basketball. What Caddo County player is the highest on the Oklahoma State list for career points? For career points on five-on-five -five in Caddo County. Yep. Mm. Well... Um, you know, there's probably been uh, uh, Autumn Clue would probably be pretty high on that list. Um, there's pro uh, is this like Anna Darko included in this as well? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if but one of those. Not from Anadarko. They're not from Anna Darko. <laughs> okay, well, I won't, I won't guess that one then. Um, probably some from Surreal have scored a lot of points. Yeah. Um, Boy, 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 that's a that's that goes all the way back to like 1997, doesn't it, or something like that? Uh, 90, started playing five. Yeah, I think so. The Wendy Willits would uh, she played um, six on six, I think, two or three of her years. Uh, yeah, 95, 96 season was the first first five, five on, on five, five. So yeah, she probably didn't have that many points five on five enough to. She is on the list for She's having on one of the best single games, a 45-point effort, and I think she got 40 in the state tournament. Yeah, in, in, a, time, in a losing but, uh, effort to number one Preston, I yeah. think it was that day. And they had a girl that scored just about as many. Can't remember her name. <clears throat> That's Stumper, Kim. I'll, okay. uh, well, you got a whole quarter to think, think about. about it. I'll have to think about that one. What else you got for me today? Um, you know, the other day I asked a question about the top Big 12 players, and, and yeah. the list I had was – had been voted on as just the most outstanding players, and I think I asked that it's the top scorers. And uh -huh. So I messed that one up. This one I'll get right. Okay. Career scores points for the NCAA. Men. Mm. Um, and this is points. Yeah. So. Well, that, that, that would probably be... Uh, oh, uh, I never can think of his name there. One from LSU. <laughs> Pete Maravich. Pete Maravich. Yeah, you're he, right. He's, he's probably, he'd probably be the one, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is, even though he only could play three years uh, and freshman couldn't play. But yeah. Pete had 3,667 points for uh, a 44.2 average per game for three years. That's a, yeah. that's a nice start. That's a pretty good career, all right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, probably what nobody it, close, is there? You well, get, actually, you get, yeah, there is um, Antoine Davis. From Detroit Mercy, he didn't even know they had a school. Uh, yeah. He's second. Um, what? How many? Did, how many? Well, how far behind? He had 35-43, and he's still scoring. So oh, he's still playing. Yeah. Oh. Well, he's finished now. This this is like um, 
probably a year or so old. So okay, but a lot of the things on the list, I don't, you know, you didn't realize they were that great a player. They're not names you hear of a lot, and some, I mean, some of them are, but um, some of these, I, you know, number four on the list, I'll give you that. Chris Clemens from Campbell, you know, graduated in 2019. He's fourth on the list. Well, those aren't in, uh, NBA names I, no. that you're giving me, I don't think. But. Freeman Williams is third. Um, mm. Lionel Simmons is fifth. You know, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of points scored in basketball. Uh -huh. uh, Alfonso Ford from Valley, from uh, Mississippi Valley State is number six. You've heard of number seven, uh, Doug McDermott from Creighton. Yeah. Graduated in 2014, but I think he's coaching them now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard of him, but I didn't know where yeah. he came from or what he was doing. You get mm -hmm. down to names you've heard from. Percy Hawkins is number 11 from Bradley. Uh, I mean, that's from graduated in 88. Oscar Roberts, Robertson, number 12 on the list. Where did he play college ball at? Cincinnati. Cincinnati, that's Yeah, right. and played for the Cincinnati Royals mm -hmm. uh, professional team. Danny Manning's 13. Yeah. Um, but you go down, Elvin Hayes is 15. Uh, Tyler Hansbro from North Carolina, 16. Number 17, Larry Bird. Well, from Indiana State. What about Magic Johnson? Is he, he no, he wasn't he that big a scorer there. in college. I mean, he's a great playmaker and got a lot. But uh, of course, nowadays, uh, last several years, the good ones don't stay in college, but a year or two. <laughs> right. That's why they don't move up the uh, career they list. They don't have a lot of points. Yeah. Uh, J.J. Reddick from Duke was 21, 20, 21 on the list. Mm -hmm. um, that's so, one of the things I miss about college sports is they don't stay for four years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're like Kentucky, you get them from one year. Uh, yeah, you know, exactly. And they move on. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, I was surprised when I looked at that list. And you think of all the big-name college players you hear of them. They're not on here. Yeah, Because um, right. they, don't, they don't stay there. Well, a lot of those, lot of those guys were on uh, really good teams, and uh, they had other people that could score also. <laughs> right. They get a balanced attack. Uh, exactly. So it, yeah. yeah. But, again, oh. um, yeah, again, our, our trivia question is career scoring for the girls in five-on-five five play uh, in a school from Caddo County. So well, maybe somebody can text the answer to us, and uh, I'll try to give it some thought here. <laughs> Good question, though. It's a great question. Um, and, and I would tell you, the, the one we're looking at is number 16 on the career chart. So... With from all, for, that would be number 16 on the list of yeah the okay. number 16 uh, on the uh, list okay 2434 points so uh, that's okay all right we're about set to go here in the second half tigers lead at 26 to 20. i was uh looking at the score of their last game when they played fort cobb over at over at mountain view mountain view led, led it 22 to 10 that day so it's uh Kind of holding, holding to the same scenario here. They lead it 26-20. And it'll be the Tigers basketball going left to right. And we're about set to go. The winner of this game advances to tomorrow night. They will play tomorrow night at 6 or six o'clock for a ticket to the big house. And if you lose this game, then the season's over. So it's a lot riding on this next 16 minutes. And here we go. Kyra Quitone will start off the attack for the Tigers. Shot over Reagan Reps, no good. Silverhorn with a rebound. Quickly up ahead to Ginger Bear, and the pass is intercepted. Didn't have a very good angle, and, and she turns it right back over on a double dribble. <laughs> We've seen that several times here, <laughs> almost like double turnovers. <laughs> Eastwood had intercepted the pass. And so it's a break for Fort Cobb. They'll have the ball back again. And Reagan Rep stumbles and falls going through the traffic and the ball sails out of bounds. So tough break that time. Yeah, just as she let go of the pass, Reagan tripped mm -hmm. on that. And, uh, yep. It's one of those things you can't do anything about. Yeah. Yep. And now Mountain View Godibo. Here comes Quitone, right side to Grace Sovo Cook, right wing. Top of the key. Three pointer by Kayla Payne is good. <laughs> Kayla Payne with her seventh point, and it's a nine point. Margin for Mountain View Goaty Bow. Just underway here, second period. There's Ginger Bear out over to Silverhorn. Hadn't Silverhorn yet to score, lost the ball right there. 
Yeah, four Cubs had the three turnovers on their first three mm -hmm. possessions, so it's uh, not a good start for them, certainly. And the Tigers are able to cash in a three-pointer a moment ago, and here's Rowan Fight. She'll try a three-pointer. Count it. <laughs> Rowan Fight. She's, she's hotter than a pistol. Yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what she does now. It's going in. And she, I mean, was, she was pretty well defended that time, yeah. it looked like. <laughs> and it looked like she was looking at the defender when she shot uh, it. So biggest lead of the contest, Tigers on top, 32 to 20. Well, Cobbs had no answer for Rowan fight today. There's Ginger Bear, and she's going to be fouled on the entry pass. Grace Sobo Cook picks up her second foul. Well, Cobble inbound along the baseline. Back door to Savage. Shots blocked by Eastwood. And Quitone brings it into the front court. I'm sure fights would like to get open because she's so hot today. I mean, she would uh, like to get as many opportunities as she can. <laughs> she's really shot it well. Eastwood tries a long three-pointer. And it's loose in the corner and out of bounds off Mountain View. With 6.02 to play here, third period. Glad you're along with us. If you can't be here this tonight, uh, we'll, be, we'll have the Fort Cobb boys tonight uh, at approximately 7.30. They'll be playing the Duke Tigers tonight for a chance to go to state. Reagan rep spin move, good shot, but it's off the backboard, no good. Pretty good play that time, but couldn't convert it. A pretty good crowd here for Friday mm -hmm. afternoon. Yep. There's Fight. Trying to get away from Brown. Can't do it this time. Now she catches top of the key. Zoe Brown right on her. They pass it off to Payne. Now out to Quitone. Tigers don't have to be in any kind of a hurry. They've got a real comfortable lead. And as long as you don't Feel a lot of pressure on you. You can just burn a lot of clock if you choose to. Quitone dribbles through the lane. Shots knocked out of bounds by Silverhorn. Yeah, it looked like she was driving through and was looking for someone to pass to and it wasn't open, so she said, I'd better mm. shoot it. <laughs> it wasn't really unbalanced yeah. for that, so kind of blocked out of bounds. Going to work out okay for them. They'll get to yeah. keep the ball. There's Spike. It was in the lane, jump. Oh, my. I thought she was passing that, and he went yeah. towards the goal. Missed that one. She jumped up, and uh, <laughs> something changed. Uh, so she didn't yeah. have any options yeah. but to kind of throw it at the goal. Yeah. There's Silverhorn. Great move down the lane for two. Little ball fake. It laid it in. It's 32-22 now. First basket for Silverhorn. I think she's only taken one three-point attempt. That's what she's really good at. Tigers have done a great job defending the Fort Cobb's three-point game today. In this man-to-man -man defense. Sovo Cook now right side to Rowan Fight. One versus one. Brown against Fight. And Tigers just being patient. That's what I do. Just be methodical about it. There's Rowan Fight. Little six-foot jumper's good. That's you know, a tough shot. It is. That's a shot you're going to bank about 80% of the time, mm -hmm. and she didn't, but yet it still goes in, in for her. That's right. There's Silverhorn. Down low to Ginger Bear. Her first touch this half. Shot's good. Ginger Bear got the kind bounce and a timeout taken by Coach Jana Rogers for the Lady Mustangs as the lead is 10 now. 34-24 with 3.48 to play. Third period. I have one text message, Kim, on a, uh, yeah. on a guess um, from Dennis Crawford, my old friend in Alec, Oklahoma. Okay. And his guess is Wendy Willits. Okay. So uh, I guess we'll find out here momentarily if he's right or not. But uh, You've got the prizes, don't you? Yes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've got him a prize. Yeah, okay. I'll let you give that to him. But Is that the right answer? Uh, no. No, that's not the right answer. Okay, Dennis, you'll have to guess again. <laughs> that was a good one, though. It was, yeah. That, when I was looking at that, I thought she would be on that list, mm -hmm. too. Well, if you'd count her six on six games, yeah, she probably would be. She kind of, I'm sure, had enough points to be on some list, and, and they got them split on the two, so... Yeah. 
Tigers get the ball inbound. It fight quickly the other way. They're able to stop her from scoring. And she passed, oh, there's a walk on Quitone. She kind of caught in between what she wanted to do. So Lady Mustangs with another opportunity. They trail by 12. Brenda Davis checked in and they've cut the lead down to 10. Davis is in for Savage. You know, Savage got those 10 early points and then uh, they've kind of shut her down mm -hmm. since then. So. And the ginger bear, a little height advantage, shot a little bit short, almost fouled, trying to get the rebound again. <laughs> Jump ball, and it's going to go to Fort Cobb. Yeah, a ginger almost fouled her, trying to get the miss. She's got a couple of breaks on fouls. He didn't call it. <laughs> she got two yeah. early ones, and that's still has two. In the rip. Out front to Davis. She'll dribble in the lane, and she's bumped and fouled. That's the second team foul on the Tigers. I think they gave that to Eastwood. Her third. And she's going to be replaced by Kayla Payne, who's got seven points so far tonight. To get it into Ginger, shot off the glass, no good. Rebound Tigers. Here comes Quitone. Lobs it over to Sovo Cook. Right side to go to Hooper. It's a pretty small lineup for Mountain View go to go. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I mean, they're playing out front with all the guards, so right. it, they realize they don't have anything to inside. Right. right. There's Rowan fight, right of the lane, shot good. How many times have I said that today? She's having an outstanding night. That's 23 points for her. And it just seems like every time she gets the ball, she scores. <laughs> yeah. And they're not all easy passes. No, passers. they're right. There's a good pass from Davis to Bear. She bumps it in for two. That's eight for Ginger. And it's back to a 10-point game. Tigers on top of 2.14 to play third period. Tigers have just been real methodical here in the second half. Yep. Wait till they get the shot they want. Able to convert it. Quitone down the middle of the lane. Shot no good that time. And they tap it out of bounds. Quitone and, and uh, Kayla Payne were kind of fighting for it there, and it went out of bounds. Here's Savage will replace Pretty Bear. good shot. About a five-footer mm -hmm. right in front of it. But, um, a lot of defense there, but yep. still a makeable shot. Mm -hmm. Brown into the lane. Out to Davis, fumbled the pass over to Silverhorn. Boy, Fight's done a good job keeping her off the three-point line. And we're going to have a foul on Fight. And that's her first personal. Third team foul. Fort Cobb needs to get try to get to the free throw line. They scored a lot of points first half there. Savage shot good off the glass on the inbounds play. And she it's didn't an have much lead. room there. <laughs> kind yep. of forced the pass yep. in there, and she put up a yep. shot in traffic and got it to go. Savage with 12 points so far, and there's a... Oh. Thought maybe he's going to call a sliding or pivot foot. Yeah, but there's a too. foul on Savage, I think. That's her second. First team foul on Fort Cobb. In the corner to Hooper. Trying to get it to fight. Now she'll dribble along the baseline. Got free, wide open, kicked it out side to Sovo Cook. Had a wide open shot. Passed it up. Quitone. Mustang's doing a pretty good job harassing them now out on her perimeter. And we're going to have another foul on Zoe Brown. That'll be her second personal. I think that's what Fort Cobb's got to do to get back into the game, Kim, is try to harass their guards a little bit and create some turnovers. Yeah, they turned up the pressure a lot there on defense. Mm -hmm. There's Quitone. Little 10-foot floater off the glass and in. Ty Quitone. That's kind of her game right there. And it's back to a 10-point lead for the Tigers. Davis 
In the paint, dumps it down low to Savage. Pass intercepted by Hooper, and then Davis fouled her. I think Davis would have been better off just taking a jump shot there. Yeah, probably so. But threw it into traffic, so that's her second foul. 39.8 seconds in the third period. Tigers with a 10-point lead. Pretty well had that the whole third period here. Ball batted out of bounds off of the Tigers, they say. It was good defense by Silverhorn to create the turnover. And Ginger Bear is going to check in, replacing Davis. And in Eastwood will be in for Kayla Payne. Yeah, okay. Well, Fort Cobb with a chance if they can take the last shot if they want to to try to get the lead down under 10. Yeah, Mountain View gets the ball for the fourth quarter unless something changes. Tigers led by six at the half, and they've increased that by a bucket. Under 12 seconds. Starts, Brown starts the attack to Silverhorn. There's a lob pass intercepted by Quitone. They've telegraphed that one. Four seconds to go. Quitone into the front court. Ah, shot off the glass, no good. And after three quarters of play, Mountain View Godibo, 38. Put Cal Broxton, 28. Well, Don, the trivia question. Yes, sir. Was the highest on the career scoring list for girls in five on five basketball from Keto County. And um, let's see, I don't have any guesses here. Okay, number 16 on the list, tied for 16, is Julie Fulbright Tackett from Grace Knight. Okay. She graduated in year 2000. She has 2,434 points. So, uh, how about that? Great career at Grace Mont. Julie number, was a good ball player. She yeah. Threw, uh, number 23 on the list is a lady down here on the bench, uh, Autumn Clue. Uh huh. Says, uh, I thought she would probably be pretty high on yeah, the list. Number 23, uh -huh. 2,318 points. So, yeah. That, um, of course, Julie went on to play at uh, Southern Nazarene, wasn't it? I believe, college. Autumn, yeah. Autumn played at yeah. Northwestern at Alva. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just. Ask the other one right now, and we're telling at the end of the game, six on six. It's the same question. Okay. Caddo County player who's highest on the list. Um, That's probably somebody from Oni. <laughs> you know, Oni had, he had some big rears up there. They all went through this. <laughs> I'm going I'm to guess one of the uh, – uh, boy, my memory's not very good. I'll think of it in a minute. Well, I'd like to tell you to get better <laughs> as you get older, but – <laughs> I think I know the answer to that one. Okay. Fort Cobb's or Mountain View's ball to start the fourth period. They lead it by 10. Back and forth game there in the third period. And now the Tigers will look like they want to try to slow it down a little bit. Now they get it to fight, trying to clear out some space for her. She's played awfully well, 23 points so far. It's Quitone on the drive, little eight-foot floater off the glass, no good, but good hustle by Eastwood to get the rebound. Down low, they go to Eastwood. Shot is good, and she's fouled. Get Paisley Eastwood with her first basket, and that to be the third foul on Ginger Bear. And Eastwood will have the attempt for the three-point play, and she gains it. Boy, Paisley's playing well. 41-28 now, biggest lead of the contest. Tigers trying to close this one out. Fort Cobb's got an uphill climb now with 7.17 to play in the game. Reagan Rep dribbling in the paint. Silverhorn running a weave out front. Rep in the paint, left-handed shots, no good. Rebound, Eastwood. You know, Fort Cobb's averaging nine points a quarter this game so far, and they're 13 down yeah. now. And uh, so, I mean, that's if Mountain View doesn't score again. Yeah. So Pretty big hill to climb. They, you know, get a couple of three-pointers, and that gap gets down in single digits real quick. Yep. Well, Fort Cobb has not had any three-point attempts today. Speak of maybe one early. But the Tigers have done a great job on defense today. They really have. And uh, Rowan Fight shot the ball so well today that uh, pretty hard to stop him. Gets around Bear, lays it in for two, or Brown 
Easy two that time for Rowan Fight. And she's got 25 points. 15 point lead for the Tigers. Yeah, four Cubs, one out of five on three pointers. Mm -hmm. Silverhorn with it. Reagan Rip, turn, shot, no good, foul. That was on Quitone. And Reagan Rip will be back at the line where she is two for two so far. That's one of the things they were able to do in the first half is get to the free throw line. In the second half, this is their first opportunity. Makes the first. Coach Rogers will take the timeout. Full timeout. And Dennis tells me that it's it's a girl from Oni. I can see her face, but can't remember her name. <laughs> you know, I've got the same uh, the same problem, Dennis. I hate to tell you, but, uh, Mooter was the name. I believe I'm going to go with Shelly Mooter. Well, you're a winner. <laughs> All right. Way to go, Dennis. <laughs> we can share our prize today. Yeah, yeah. She's number two on the list <laughs> with uh, 4,499 points. That's a lot of points. Liz Brown, number one. Yeah. I should get a bonus prize for that, Liz yeah. Brown. Uh -huh. yeah. Shelly's sister, Tammy, is number six on the list uh -huh. with 4,034 points. So, uh, you know, you add those up anyway, and that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. <laughs> I remember those days when I first moved to Fort Cobb and uh, the only, the only lady owls were a juggernaut, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, they could they could score a lot of yeah, points. Yeah, they could. Shelly went on to have a great career at Southwestern and actually coached there, mm -hmm. too. Yep. I saw where, in just a, coming up soon, they're having the 40th anniversary celebration of the Southwestern's women's national title. They won back in 1983. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Rep makes both free throws. It's a 13-point lead now for the Tigers. Full court pressure by Fort Cobb. Six minutes to go in the game. Pass down to Eastwood, and she's going to be fouled by Ginger Bear going up for the shot. Yeah, that's Ginger's fourth that foul. Four on Ginger, but not much you can do there if they come in to challenge you. You've got to try to block the shot here late in the game. And Eastwood, who made one a moment ago, makes another. Savage is gonna replace Ginger Bear for the Lady Mustangs, and Eastwood will have one more. And she makes them both. That's five for Eastwood, and it's back to a 15-point margin. Zoe Brown kicks it off to Reagan Rip into the paint. Three-pointer by Silverhorn, no good. And it's off of Mountain View and out of bounds. Now you're at kind of at the point, Kim, where you're just, if, even if you just have the slightest opening, you're going to have to fire away from three-point line, look to me like. To yeah, being 15 down, you've mm -hmm. got to put some shots yeah. up. You want, certainly want to get the best you can, but yeah. you can't yeah. delay it either. Yeah. You can't afford to burn a lot of clock on your possessions. And Brown missed the shot, got her own rebound, and then she's fouled by Rowan Fight. It's only her second. Not right now, it's Fort Cobb 30, Rowan 5, 25. <laughs> no, she's really played well. Inbound to Davis, dribbles out. Rep through the lane, off the glass and in. Good basket by Reagan Rep. That's eight for her. And the pressure doesn't bother the Tigers. Rowan fight, dribbles all the way down, shot off the glass is Good, but it was the before the shot, she was fouled. I could see that one going either way. So yeah, really could. I wouldn't have argued if you'd yeah. counted the basket. But. but I'm telling you, I'm at the point when Rowan fight shoots it, I'm counting it good because yeah. she hadn't missed very many. I'm kind of like yeah, Brent Davis picked up her third foul. Kind of like you, I might just start fouling her before she can shoot it, and maybe she'll miss a free throw. Right side to go to Hooper. Quitone cutting to the hoop. Nice bounce pass. Now there's Eastwood, left wing three. No good, but Hooper gets the rebound. Tigers doing everything right so yeah. far. Rowan fight, shot good. <laughs> I'm telling you, those aren't easy shots. That, no, that was a tough bucket. Uh, she drove into the lane from the side and yeah. had a kind of a floating jumper yeah. on the move. That was a tough bucket. 
And she's only a freshman, Kim. She is, she is having a day. Three-pointer by Silverhorn, no good. Rebound Tigers. You know, it's, it's amazing uh, how things turn around. Uh, these two teams played in the county tournament. And uh, Fort Cobb won that game 48-31. Yeah. And it's just about a reversal here today. 47-32 yeah. right, right now. Yeah. That's in why matter, they play them, I guess. Matter of a month, yeah. But uh, I'll tell you what, Rowan Fight is not playing like a freshman. Well, she hadn't played like she did the other two games either. <laughs> That's true. So she's yeah, having she a really is, nice game. She is really coming alive. Shot no good by Quitone. And Fort Cobb fumbles it out of bounds. Well, Mountain View's getting the breaks, but they're making their breaks right mm -hmm. now. Fort Absolutely. Cobb's, uh, kind of making some mistakes. I mean, that was a rebound there, and you kind of drop it, and you drop it on the end line. Yep, so that's right. Got a foul there. Uh, oh, got away. There's a break for Fort Cobb. What call did Walken, he call? Call walking on her, and uh, Silverhorn escaped without a foul call. So Halfway through the fourth period. Down low they go to Savage, and she's going to be bumped from behind by Sovo Cook, I think. And that will be team foul number seven on the Tigers, so the Mustangs that, will be in the bonus. That's a oh, six. six? Okay, yeah, so after this. They got it up there quick. Yeah, I guess so, because I, I, didn't, I didn't ever see it change. That's what they need to try to do is try to get to the line, and we're going to have a... A foul on Rowan Fight. Yeah, she was third. holding Silverhorn, I think. That'll be team foul number seven, and Kalia Silver or Reagan Rep will be at the line shooting one in the bonus. Reagan is four for four so far. They could certainly use some points with the clock not running. running. Mm -hmm. She made the first. Yeah, about half their points in the first half came at the line, and uh, they were able to kind of stay in it. Hadn't shot a lot here in the second half, but Reagan is six for six at the line. It's a 13-point lead. We're going to have a full timeout taken. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Southwest Oklahoma Driving School, T-Bird's Convenience Store, and Mr. Travis Birchie and all his hands down there. Appreciate those folks. Carnegie Fiber. Carnegie, Oklahoma, and Washita Valley Bank in Fort Cobb. Couldn't do it without them, and we appreciate them very much. And we appreciate you tuning in today. It's been a good season, Kim. But, uh, we've uh, got to do a lot of Caddo County games, and uh, uh, it's been uh, it's just been a fun year. But this, or it's winding down for us. The uh, state. We don't get to do anything in the state tournament. The OSAA, right. they have their own uh, broadcast crews. Uh, you, have to, you have to pay for their service. So yeah. uh, this week will be the end of our basketball season for the year. And uh, it's been, been fun. fun. Yeah, yeah it, has. it really has. We, look at, we think of those uh, seniors, um, Ginger Bear and Caden Holman. You know, they're certainly hoping for a comeback here because you, the season would end if. Uh, if they don't get this one pulled out and turned around, so it's always a sad day when you when you play your high, last high school it game. I know that. It certainly I, is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a big deal for these yep. kids. It was was when we played. It still yeah. is. Even even if you win your last game, it's still bittersweet. You know, when you lose that last one, and you it's know, a better game feeling. Though. Over. Yeah, <laughs> when the last one's done. Tigers beat the press without any trouble. Wheatone dribbling well over to Eastwood. Top of the key to Quitone, now over to. I think the, the, we're gonna play slow down a little bit now and try to protect that 13 yeah. point lead. Probably a wise idea. There's only three and a half minutes to play and their guards are pretty good. Quitone steps around Davis, shot no good, got her own rebound. Ginger Bear was able to intercept the pass. Tigers have been a step quicker today, it seems to me. You know, yesterday we commented that maybe Fort Cobb would have a little bit of advantage by having couple more hours rest, but uh, Mountain View Godibos seem to be the quicker team today. Three-pointers no good. And they can't control the rebound. It's out of bounds to, to the Tigers. But Mountain View's look pretty sharp today. They really have. Yeah, they played well. And, of course, Rowan Fights played outstanding. Mm -hmm. 
Full court pressure in the backcourt. And fight gets it over to Payne. Now Quitone into the front court, cross court this, this to fight. This is when it's a hard time to play defense because it's kind of desperation mode. Um, I don't know what he <laughs> saw, but he called the offensive foul on oh. the fight. Wow. That's uh, that's quite remarkable. That's her fourth foul. <laughs> I'd have to. Fans are a little upset. I can't hardly blame them. I didn't really see anything there, but nevertheless, Fort Cobb with the basketball. And oh. there's a travel. With 2.40 to play. And now. But like, I said, it, like I said, it's a hard time to play defense. You just, you're playing so hard. And there's a steal after a lot of contact. And <laughs> there's a charge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is Thank going you. on? <laughs> we'll, Fort Cobb, you'll take that. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's. Uh, I think it's all going to be academic, but uh, anyway, uh, Reagan Rep will be back at the line to shoot two, as Coach Kimberly is beside himself. I, it's. Uh, he's had some tough breaks go against him here in the last minute or two. I'll, I'll say that for sure. I don't want the official's job. I, I'll, I'll also say that. Yeah, if you're Fort Cobb, you certainly need to take advantage mm. of these breaks. And there's a free throw by Reagan. She has made seven of them in a row. And it's eight in a row, and it's 11-point ball game with 2.30 to play. Still some time left here. Quick tone dribbling through the lane up ahead to Eastwood. Layup good. Paisley Eastwood for the easy two. And as the Lady Tigers build the lead up to 13, 49-36. Yeah, sometimes you concentrate so hard on the press that you forget mm -hmm. those people down yeah. into the, the other end. There's a good drive by Brenna Davis. Yeah. It's her first basket. Timeout taken by Coach Rogers with 2.09 to play. 49-38, their score. And it will be a full timeout, they say now. As Coach Kimberlin talking to his girls. Now let's see, what do, you, what do you do here different? Anything, you just try to press them the best you can, get a turnover and hope for the best? Yeah, you're in desperation mode. I mean, you're down 11, um, what, a little over two minutes? Yep. And uh, you've got to get the ball. You know, you're gonna play hard to defense as you can, but you need to take some chances and try to get some steals. What's the foul situation? The scoreboard went away. I don't think we're near seven yet, are we? No, you yeah, have six. Okay, six. Okay, yeah. so next foul in uh, the Tigers will be shooting free throws. And yeah, they, they've, uh, they've made five out of seven so far. Uh, Kai Quitone's two for two. Eastwood's three for three. And Rowan Fight, believe it or not, is 0 for two. So 49-38 with uh, 209 to play. Yeah, and on offense, you've got to get up and try to get a good shot quick, but mm -hmm. quick is the thing right now. You mm -hmm. need some points. Yep. Sweet tone to fight right side. Dumps it down low to Sovo Cook, and they turn it over. Two minutes to play. Yep. That helps. Not what you want if you're the Tigers. Hooper checks in, replacing yeah. fight with those four fouls. So, you know, they could get it under 10 right here. Kim right. with the basket. Yeah. Like I said, a couple of three-pointers changes the dents in a hurry. Rip in the paint. Over the silver horn. Left wing three is no good. Off the heel of the basket. Ginger Bear with a good rebound to Davis. Step back behind the three-point line. It's short. Rip with a rebound. Put back's no good. Battle for the rebound. Quitone comes away with it. Two good looks for Fort Cobb. Couldn't convert it. Up ahead to Eastwood in the front court. And we're going to have a timeout taken by the Tigers with 1.32 to play. It calls timeout to get fight back in the ball game for the offensive end. Ran about 30 seconds off and nobody scored, which is exactly what Mountain View was, had in mind. But boy, Fort Cobb had a pretty good look at it there a couple of times. Yeah, had, had a couple of open looks. And, uh, you know, of course, you feel just a little rush now, too, and it may throw off your shooting just little so it's mm -hmm. uh, it's a tough situation but uh, like I said they're in desperation mm -hmm. mode now 
I would anticipate uh, an intentional foul or not, or just a foul to try to get them at the line. And I would, I would, I don't know who you're going to foul. Uh, you don't really want to. I wouldn't foul Rowan Fight, even though she is 0-2. Yeah. And the and the pain and let's see, Eastwood and Quitone are have both made all of theirs. So might try uh, Kayla Payne. She hadn't shot a free throw yet, but she's made seven points. So see what the strategy is here. Wheat tone, it's kind of hard to foul her. She's quick. Dribbling out front and over to fight, and they're going to foul her. Zoe Brown fouls Rowan Fight, and Rowan will be at the line to shoot one in the bonus. Minute 24 left. How many has she got, Tim? 27. 27. And she'll be shooting one in the bonus. Made that one. I kind of, I kind of thought she would make that one. <laughs> she, she's got the hot hand today. It gives her 28, and it's a 12-point lead for Mountain View Goaty Bow. Made them both, and she'll be replaced by Mabry Hooper with 1:24 to play. No time to waste now. Brown quickly into the front court. Got to get on that three-point line, get your hands ready and fire away. Catch a pass right there it is. Davis, three-pointer, no good. And it will go out of bounds with 107 to play in the contest. Fight will be back in for Hooper. And the Tigers still in the backcourt, burning a little clock here. Double team, ball loose, picked up by Silverhorn underneath the basket, shot good. Silverhorn, 51 to 40 with 52 seconds, and there's a foul on Fort Cobb, and Quitone now will be shooting one in the bonus. Yeah, Zoe Brown's fourth, eighth team foul, so. Quitone, on two for two so far. She got six points today. Free throw good. I'll tell you what, both these teams have shot free throws really well today, and that's what it takes to yeah. in playoff basketball to, to keep advancing. You need to make free throws. Both these teams have done it. She missed that one. Davis with the rebound. 12-point lead. 48 seconds to play. Davis kicks it out to Silverhorn. Three-pointer on the way. No good again. And Eastwood lost the handle on it out of bounds, and they're going to say it's Fort Cobb's ball with 39 seconds to play. That's the best look Silverhorn's had today. But like you say, you're rushing everything just a little bit at this time of the contest. Davis has it poked away. Reagan Rip hustles over, and it's knocked out of bounds by Hooper. 30 seconds. You know, the Tigers are drawing closer to advancing to tomorrow night's contest. In the corner to go to Reagan Rip. Yeah. Walked, got away yeah. with it, yeah. <laughs> Silverhorn in the lane, little threat left-hander is good. That's six for Kalia, and it's 10-point ball game with 20 seconds to play. And we're going to have a timeout taken by Mountain View Godibo with 18.3 seconds. And a 10-point lead. The winner of this game will play the loser of tonight's game between Hammond and Rakeba Sickles. That game will be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Hammond, number one in the next state, I believe, weren't they, Kim? They have been, yeah. They beat uh, Lomega at mm -hmm. Hammond, I think. It's probably the top two teams in the state. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, you got to hand it to Mountain View Godibo. They've battled through the consolation bracket, and, uh, you know, if they shoot the ball like they did today, they who knows uh, what what they might achieve tomorrow evening. But wait and see. Yeah, they, it's been a good effort for them tonight. They've, they've played a good ball game. Yep. Fort Cobb's have not had a good shooting 
Right, but, we'll look at the numbers yeah. here in a little bit. But they played hard, but it's just mm -hmm. been a small basket today. Uh, that's right. Like. They get it inbound to Quitone. Quickly up ahead to Eastwood. Locked down to 10, and that's pretty well going to wrap it up. As the Mountain View Goaty Bowl Lady Tigers played awfully well today. Down to three, two, one, and there's your final buzzer. And the Mountain View Goaty Bowl Tigers, 52. Fort Cobb Roxton, 42. And so the congratulations to Coach Kimberlin and his Lady Tigers as they will advance to tomorrow evening's area consolation final. And as Kim mentioned, they'll play the loser of tonight's game. That will be between Hammond and Lokiba Sickles. And that winner of that contest then will get a ticket to the state tournament. Meanwhile, uh, Lady Mustangs, congratulations to uh, Coach Rogers and Coach Shumpert for a valiant effort today. And a, Good season. They fall to 14 and 16 on the year, but uh, they gave it their all. They had a good run here did, to, yeah. at the end, and uh, nothing to be ashamed of. And they just got a little outscored a little bit today, but uh, they'll be back again next year, I'm sure. We'll turn they it over to Kim them. for the final wrap up. Kim? All right, let's look at Fort Cobb Roxton scoring. Zoe Brown, the two points. She was two out of two from the free throw line, did not attempt to field goal. Kalia Silverhorn had six points. She was three out of 10 shooting. Three for four on two pointers, 0 for six three pointers. Ginger Bear had eight points on four of 11 shooting. Four out of 10 two pointers, 0 for one three pointers. Madison Savage with 12 points. She was four out of five from the floor. Three out of four on two pointers. One for one three pointer and three out of three from the free throw line. Brenda Davis had two points on one of four shooting. One of one two pointers, 0 for three three pointers. And Reagan Rep with 12 points. Reagan was two out of six from the floor. Two out of five on two pointers. 0 for one three pointers. Eight out of eight from the free throw line. Fort Cobb shot 39% for the game. 14 out of 36. Two pointers, they were 13 out of 24 for 54%. Three pointers, one out of 12 for 8%. I bet wow, it's been a while since yeah. she only, yeah. since they only had one three yeah. pointer. Yeah, that hurt them right there. Yeah. And free throws, they're perfect. 13 out of 13. Wow. So that kind of mm -hmm. kept them within sight. Yeah. They had 13 personal fouls. For Mountain View Godibo, Rowan Fight with 29 points. She was 12 out of 15 from the floor. Nine of 11 on two pointers. Three out of four three pointers. Two out of four on free throws. Mabry Hooper was 0 for 2 from the field, 0 for 1 on 2 pointer, 0 for 1 on 3 pointer. Grace Sobo Cook had 2 points. She was 0 for 1 from the field on a 3 point attempt, but 2 out of 2 from the free throw line. Kayla Payne had 7 points on 3 of 5 shooting, 2 out of 3 from 2 pointers, 1 of 2 3 pointers. Paisley Eastwood had 7 points. She was 2 out of 6 shooting, 2 out of 4 2 pointers, 0 for 2 3 pointers, 3 out of 3 free throws. Kai Quitone had seven points. She was two of 12 shooting, two of 11 two pointers, 0 for one three pointers, three out of four from the free throw line. Mountain View Goody Bow shot 46% from the floor, 19 out of 41. Two pointers, they were 50% at 15 out of 30. Three pointers, four of 11 for 36%, and free throws, 10 out of 13 for 77%, and he had 15 total fouls. So, Don, really the numbers don't look that bad. I mean, the thing that sticks out for Fort Cobb, I think, is one of 12 three-pointers. Right. Yep. And uh, they couldn't get any of those to kind of get a lead in the first half. And then they couldn't get any in the, you know, the fourth quarter to get back in the game. Um, you know, look at the quarters. They were down 16 to 10 after the first quarter. They were down 26-20 at halftime. Uh, down 10 points after the third quarter, 38-28, and then uh, getting beat 52-42. So, you know, they started off with a 5-0 lead. Yeah. And then I think um, Mountain View went on a 20-5 run and kind of took control of the game and never let up after that. Yep. Kind of kept that 10-12 mm -hmm. yep. point lead uh, all through the second half. So congratulations to Mountain View Goaty Bow. And like I said, they'll play at 6 o'clock tomorrow night against the loser of the Hammond Lokiba Sickles girls. That ended Fort Cobb season. And, uh, of course, uh, Ginger Bear and Peyton Holman's career ends with that and we thank them for all the good years and good yep. games they've had mm -hmm. and uh, wish them the best but uh, tough loss for them but proud of the effort they played well and won several games here in the playoffs and yep. had a pretty good run at it absolutely so, tough tough way to go but um, 
Good effort. Thanks, Kim. Great reporting. And uh, yeah, they ran into a bus all row and fight today. Yeah, that was. <laughs> you know, I don't she know. 28. Is that what she had? 24, 26. Uh, yeah, she had 29. 29. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 29 I know, points. I don't know if that's a career game or not, but it it looked like it from our standpoint. Well, I tell you, you know, just a freshman, and that was that was quite a show she put on today. Yeah, it and, was uh, very impressive. You know, it, it, when you're looking at a ball game like this, and you think you get beat by 10. And one of their players got 29 points. Yeah. If you just hold somebody to 15, you know, you're in pretty good shape. But uh, she did the job today. Hats off to her. She played a great ball game. And uh, hopefully she'll continue to do that. It's been fun. Fun season so far covering these girls. Uh, we got one more game tonight. I hope you can tune back in to us today, folks. If, uh, if you're unable to break it down to cash for the uh, area final tonight, it should be a dandy. Fort Cobb Broxton Mustangs, number one team in Class B, taking on the number six rated Duke Tigers tonight here in Cash, Oklahoma. I think it'd probably be a full house, I'm anticipating. I know Duke always brings a lot of fans, and uh, Fort Cobb does it well. But uh, if you can't join, uh, can't be here, I hope you tune in to fcbmustangs.tv. We'll have it here for you at approximately 7.30 tonight. I'd like to thank uh, John Bellamy for our camera work again, Jared Petty John for producing our show today. Appreciate that very much. And thanks to Kim for making his long drive from his home in Edmond to all the way down here to help us. And he does a great job and uh, appreciate all he does. And uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, for it's all those folks, fun. I guess we'll see you after a while. Hope so. Proud supporters of Fort Cobb Mustangs. The name of the store is T-Birds. Come see Connie for our daily lunch specials. Mm-mm, good. We offer cold drinks, hot food, and a clean environment. Also, $1 Fountain Pop Wednesdays. See you soon. Washita Valley Bank, locally owned and operated since 1902, proudly serving the Fort Cobb area with knowledgeable and friendly professionals that actually care about your financial well-being. Online banking, loans, certificate of deposit, safe deposit boxes, 24-hour telephone banking, and an ATM. For service you can trust, Washita Valley Bank, 405-643-2305, member FDIC. We are your premier best in-state driving school, located in southwest Oklahoma at Fort Cobb Public School. We can provide all the services related to driving in the state of Oklahoma, such as driver's education, in-house testing capabilities, permits, and drive testings for a license. The only thing that you will be required from DPS is your eye exam. We have certified instructors that use our cars to teach your students how to be the best drivers from the beginning. Come see us today for all your driving needs. We're bringing fiber internet to Fort Cobb. Having fast internet is a must have, whether you're working or learning from home. That's why we are building a fiber network in your community. We have wireless internet solutions too, available at Fort Cobb Lake, Crow's Roost, Alfalfa, and more. You can count on us for a fast, reliable connection to the world. We're proud to be a local provider that's part of your community. Get connected to Carnegie Fiber today. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Stream with Pioneer iVideo and more. Live, recorded, on demand, all in HD easily find and watch your favorite shows and movies anywhere on any device perfect for the entire family and easy to use enjoy pioneer iVideo today